This Google Wi-Fi mesh system has failed me, so I'm gonna replace it with this. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I have been using the Google Wi-Fi mesh system for my home internet for the last few years now, and they have been working decently well. And when I first got them, I definitely had an improvement in the coverage and speed around my home. Over the years, though, I have continued to add these nodes because there have been problems with it, and I thought continuing to add nodes would actually improve the speed, improve the coverage, make it more reliable, and I now have seven of these nodes around my house, and I don't have that big of a house, single story. And so what I've been realizing here is that there's something wrong with these, and I thought it might have been firmware, but I think it's maybe the hardware starts going bad or something, because there are a couple of things that happen. One, sometimes the network just disappears for a minute and then comes back. Anytime I do the test now, on these things it shows that they always have a weak signal to each other and because i have seven of these nodes running the length of my house they are at the furthest 30 feet apart at the closest 10 feet apart so there should not be any strength issues with this the last thing that i have noticed that really ticks me off is that i can have my phone very close to a node and get either a weak or a moderate strength Wi-Fi signal. And what I mean by pretty close is that I can have my phone literally three feet away from one of these nodes and the signal strength says moderate. So I wanted to come to this room, which is in the far corner of my house and furthest away from my Wi-Fi router. And as you can see, the signal strength isn't good. In fact, it just finally reconnected right there. So I was gonna do a speed test, but because it kind of bounces around and falls off of the Wi-Fi network and goes back onto the cellular network sometimes, I don't think it's gonna be particularly good, but I do have a signal right now. So let's just go ahead and run the sucker and see what it says. Ah, lost it. Not atypical for this corner of my house. So I am going to replace these and see if that improves the connection of my home. And what I got to replace it is this. It's the Eros. This is a home mesh network. And from what I was reading about this, it's supposed to be pretty good. There are a bunch of competitors in this space, but I picked this because it looked like it had the easiest setup and I am not a smart man. So I thought I would get the simplest thing possible. Now, what do you get in this box? So I've gone ahead and opened it up and what we get are three of these Eros, not Eros, not the sensual body love, uh, Eero. You get three of these little nodes. They have a glossy white top, Eero in chrome on the top. They have a little bit of an angle and a compound curve on the top. The sides are all matte plastic. On the back here, we have two ethernet jacks and then a USB-C port right there. The bottom here is rubberized, so it shouldn't move around on you. And you know, they're pretty decent looking. Compared to the Google, which is all matte plastic, the Eros is a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter. So just a little more compact overall. And I actually like the way the plugs are on the back here, as opposed to underneath here. It gives it a clean look when you plug them into the Google, but they are actually hard to get to. Also, we get power plugs for each of the Eros, two prong. The power plug itself also looks like one of the little nodes and that has a USB-C connector on it to charge it up. And then we also get an ethernet cord. It's only about a meter long, about three feet long, but you're going to need this because when you set this up, it has to be plugged into your modem. So the very first node has to be plugged in. So now let's see if we can get the sucker running. Okay, so I set up an account in the app here, and it looks like we are getting ready to go here. So, I have everything together. And the first thing you have to do is unplug your old modem and old router from power. So, I guess I'll do that first. Alright, now we are going to connect it by plugging it in to the modem. So, that first node has got to plug into your modem, so I am just going to plug the cable into one of the open slots here. And I actually don't know which ethernet port the cord is supposed to go into, so I'm just gonna pick one and if it doesn't work, we'll switch it later. And now I'm going to plug in the power. All right, finally found it. That can take a little while for it to find it. Where is this one? I'm gonna say family room and give your Eero Wi-Fi network a name and password. Well, that's gonna be easy. 
All right, so I have one node up and running, it looks like. Am I ready to set up another one? Yeah, you bet, let's try it out. Okay, so I've got them all set up here and I'm back in the same corner of my house and you can see we're getting a full signal right there. So I'm just gonna hit this. Now, remember, I couldn't even run this test before because basically it wouldn't connect to my Wi-Fi at home. And as you can see there, Ooh, looks like I'm getting 25 megabit downloads over here. So that's pretty good. This is the furthest distance that I can get to inside my home from my main router. So I'm pretty happy with that. So not only am I getting pretty good speeds that I can stream high def video, but I'm just getting a connection, which is a vast improvement. Hey, if you want to pick up these Eros, I am really impressed with them. They are pretty easy to set up and they definitely work. I'll put a link to him in the description below. Peter Brown Panda, out.